2 Samuel chapter 6. And then if you would stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. Second Samuel chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. <clears throat> the word of the Lord reads, And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom, and all that pertaineth unto him, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place, in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. I want to talk to you for a little while today on the topic of can't have this dance. Amen. Can't have this dance. Would you bow your heads with me? Master, we love you. We thank you, God, for the great presence of your spirit that we feel in this place. God, we believe you're present today to deliver, you're present today to heal, you're present today to fill with the great Holy Ghost, you're present today, God, to save. Oh, God, we're so grateful today for this. Lord, as the word of God is about to go forth, we ask that your anointing would reside upon your messenger. Help us to deliver it, God, in a way that might bring honor and glory unto your name. Help it, God, to reach into the very depths of each and every heart, of each and every one that hears it. God, those that would hear it here in person, those that might one day hear it on the Internet, those that might hear it by tape, Lord, whatever way this message is received, we pray, God, that they might receive the word that you are trying to implant in their spirit. For God, in this message are great truths that will bring great liberty and victory to our lives. Master, help us today, because I can do nothing in and of myself without your anointing. For we ask you, Lord, today in the wonderful, lovely name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated today. I want you to know today, David danced before the Lord as he brought the Ark of the Covenant in to the city of David. He danced before the Lord. Are you hearing this today, children? He did not dance before Israel. He did not dance before the people, but he danced before the Lord. I want you to know today that while worship is a corporate experience, it is at the same time a very personal experience. David may have been in the company of thousands of people that day as they carried the Ark of the Covenant from the house of Obed-Edom into the house of David, but he was dancing before the Lord. Hallelujah. He wasn't trying to impress nobody, and he didn't care if he looked funny to somebody because he was dancing before the Lord. Hallelujah. When we come into the house of God, our worship mindset has to be, I am worshiping God. Hallelujah. I am before the Lord today. I don't care about my neighbor. I'm not concerned with the one next to me. I'm here to bring glory and honor to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's nothing more wonderful than being in the presence of God. The Ark of the Covenant represented the mercy, uh, the mercy seat. And that is the very place where the presence of God Almighty was known to reside. Children, I want you to know God sits today in a place of mercy. <laughs> he sits on the gilded wings of angels 
atop the ornate ark. Our God is above all else, a merciful God. Hallelujah. Before everything else, He's a God of grace. He's a God of love. And He's a God of mercy. I don't care what any prophet, priest, pope, or pastor has ever told you in the past. Our God is sitting today in the mercy seat. Hallelujah. You can approach Him for grace. It's there for you. You can approach Him today for mercy. It's there for you. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. And I want you to know that mercy is born of love. Whoo, hallelujah. There's a joy that overwhelms God's people when we stand in his presence and we celebrate his grace. You know, Brother Willie, it's hard to get excited when a preacher gets up in the pulpit and preaches a bunch of condemnation and criticism and tells you how you're missing the mark at every turn and how imperfect you are and how faulting you are and how failing you are. I see more uh, altars filled at the end of Pentecostal church services with people wailing and whining and crying like a bunch of beat up old failures instead of seeing people in the altars shouting and dancing and rejoicing in the presence of God and in the reality that by His grace we are saved. Hallelujah! It's never been about us. It's been about Him the whole time. Hallelujah! Oh, glory! I hope that God Jubilee never has a service where everybody down in the altar weeping and wailing like a bunch of beat-up babies. Come on now! I hope the only thing we ever know is the joy of the Lord. I hope the only thing we know is the joy of the Lord. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. God's people don't get strengthened when they're down weeping and wailing in the altar because somebody told them they're held out and missing the mark. That's not what the Bible said. My Bible said that the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's the source of our strength. I won't tell you the joy I'm talking about. You don't get this joy dancing on the dance floor at the local nightclub. I, uh, uh, you can't experience this joy. You cannot experience this joy celebrating a home run at Yankee Stadium or a touchdown in Texas Stadium. You know, it never ceases to amaze me. People can paint their bellies and their faces and their hair all kinds of whacked out colors and put all kinds of shapes and uh, what have you on their, on their skin. And they can go to a football game and some man who's being paid tens of millions of dollars a year to throw around an inflated pigskin can walk across the white line and everybody jumps up and shouts and screams like all oh, holy murder. And yet, if we come into the house of God and shout about the victory that God gave us over sin, if we shout about the reality of heaven eternally, if we shout about the reality of the power of the blood, they look at us like we're done. Well, that's all right, Cody. They can look at me like I'm nuts because I'm not dancing before them. I'm dancing before the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care who's looking. I don't care who's watching because I'm not doing it for your benefit anyway. Hallelujah. I got something that the world can't give and the world can't take it away. As the old song used to say, the devil tries to offer us all kinds of substitutes all kinds of substitutes for the joy of the Lord, but there, in truth, there is no dance like the dance that you dance when you are rejoicing in the presence of the Most High. Hallelujah. Devil, you can have your night clubs. You can have your stadiums. You can have your concert halls, but you can't have this dance. Hallelujah. I've got this one nailed down, and it's reserved for my God, and you can't have it. I've reserved my dancing shoes for those times when I and my father are together. Hallelujah. Like the little bride at the wedding who knows that they're going to play daddy's dance, and that dance is reserved for she and her father. Come on now. And you know what? If somebody tries to cut in, she's got to 
end in a matter of days. But what God has done will survive eternity. When we dance, there is something to dance about. Something of eternal value and not merely a fleeting significance. It's Nehemiah 8 and 10 that tells us, For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Interestingly enough today, Brother Willie, every time we rejoice over today's victory, we recharge our batteries and prepare ourselves for tomorrow's battle. Do you hear me now? Every time we rejoice over today's victory, we're just getting ourselves charged up and ready for tomorrow's battle. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Every time we rejoice in the liberty of the Holy Ghost, we are recharging our batteries for the next day's battle. The enemy wants us to misplace our joy. Or better yet, he'd rather replace it with one of his own devices of delusion that makes the weak-minded and spiritually depraved believe that they're having the time of their lives. But God's people know how to tell that old devil plainly, Brother Willie, you can't have this dance. <laughs> you can't have this dance. I'm not going to exchange it for one of your little temporal pleasures. I'm not going to exchange it for one of your temporary highs. This dance that I've got in the presence of my God has uh, eternal repercussions and not merely temporal. <clears throat> I'll tell you, one of the greatest secrets to success ever written in the Bible is found in John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. The key to our attaining and maintaining the joy of the Lord in our lives is found in this portion of Scripture. John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17, it reads this way. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue me in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Remember what I said about make up your mind and stay on one side of the fence or the other? That's what he's saying here. But look at verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you. That what? What reason have you spoken these things unto us? That my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. The Lord is saying, this is the reason that I'm speaking these things to you, so that my joy might remain in you, and so that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, he goes on to say, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Brother Willie, when you deal with family members who have a hard time understanding and accepting certain issues, I want you to understand today the key to our attaining and maintaining the joy of the Lord in our life is maintaining a love for the brethren. Do you hear me now? That's the key to maintaining joy. I'll bet you a million dollars that your sister has lost her joy. Because when you lose your joy, you can't love nobody. And when you can't love nobody, you can't find your joy. Come on now. This concept of love the sinner hates the sin is a satanic lie designed to rob the joy from God's people. If you can see my sin, you're looking outside of yourself, and you're looking into matters where you do not belong. Hallelujah. 
someone when we see them as having a detestable or disgusting ward or growth attached to their face. That's why the Lord spoke in Matthew 7, 1 through 5, and said, Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say, thy, say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite! First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. You see, we can't love someone fully when we hate something about them. Did you hear me? That's right. So that concept of love the sinner, hate the sin, children, you can't do it. I'm going to tell you right now. And if you can't love them, I've got news for you. You're going to lose your joy. I know a lot of miserable Christians running around like Fred Bell hadn't got enough joy to fill one toe on his foot. Because they're so full of hatefulness and hatred and anger. Come on now, I know I'm telling the truth. Because I'm going to tell you, when you can't love God's people, I don't care whether you think they're right or wrong, when you can't love them, then you cannot possibly tap into the joy of your salvation. It doesn't work that way. You may not be able to explain something about somebody, but the bottom line is simply this. You'd better well not judge them or condemn them in it. I don't care if they're divorced, remarried, if they're recovering addicts, if they're a former prostitute, if they're gay or lesbian. It's not your job to inspect and judge. It is your job to love. That's right. That's right. That's right. And when you learn to do this, the joy of the Lord will well up inside you like a well of water springing up toward eternity. And when we learn to look upon ourselves trying to do the best we can and trying to be the best that we can be, instead of always trying to fix the person next to us, then and only then will the joy of the Lord be evidenced in our lives. And only then will we have a cause to dance in the presence of the King. Amen. For our joy will be plentiful and our strength will be unfailing. I want you to know today David's wife was too busy looking at King David with a critical eye. The Bible said that she despised him in her heart. Well, I know folks today that are going to look my way and despise the fact that I dance in the presence of the Lord, rejoicing in his goodness and celebrating his endless love and matchless grace. But honey, they can't have my dance. Hallelujah. They're not going to take it away from me. Glory to God. It took me too long to come to this place where I'm at today for me to turn around and give it up now. I won't give it up. They can't take it from me. Despise me if you want to. If you can't love me for what you see, you'll have all of eternity to contemplate why it was. But like, Michael, you weren't dancing with me instead of angrily sitting idle and looking at me with a critical and judgmental eye. Did you hear me now? That's a strong statement the preacher just made. If you can't love me, then you're going to have all of eternity to try to figure out why it was you couldn't. Because i got news for you, children. You're not going to make heaven. Come on now. You're not going to make heaven. Jesus said, if you can't love your brother whom you have seen, how in the world are you going to love God whom you can't see? I'll tell you what, i got something to say to Brother Willie's sister. Sister, I don't even know you. We're not even blood. We're not even family. You can have my coat, my car, my cats, my dogs, my home, my money. You can even have my boyfriend if you want him. I'll even give you a kidney. But I'll tell you what you can't have. You can't have my dad. I'm going to keep it. Hallelujah. I'm not giving it up. It's not for you. Glory to God. I'm not dancing for your benefit. I'm dancing before the Lord. And you can't have it. It took me a long time to get here. And I'm not giving it up. Glory to God. That's right. Whew. 
That's right. My Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. That's right. I like what David said in Psalm 30, verses 11 and 12. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. You remember that old chorus? I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. He has taken my sins away. That's why I'm dancing, children. And I'll tell you what, you can't have this dance. You can't take it away from me. Brother Willie, don't let your sister take your dance away. Amen. And pray for her that she'll get hers back. Amen. You hear me now. Pray for her that she'll get hers back. Because if she can ever learn to love again, instead of learning to judge and be critical and condemn, of course, you know, there are churches out there that just breed those kind of attitudes. But when she learns to love again, her joy will come back to her. And I encourage you, next time you talk to her, if you send her a letter, whatever you do, just tell her honestly, sincerely. Say, sis, I'll tell you what, I love you and my joy is intact. Come on now. I love you and my joy is intact. And when you can le learn to love me again, you'll find your joy all over again. Amen. And then together we can dance before the Lord. Instead of you watching from the sidelines like David's wife, criticizing and condemning, and David enjoying the presence of King Jesus. Amen. I know a fella, I told Brother Willie the other day, I know a fella who was attending an affirming Pentecostal apostolic church, and he took his mother to one the conference that they had, you know, and different folks came from all over, and they had some good services, and his mom went there, and the Spirit of the Lord got to moving, and she was a high-haired UPC lady, and her husband's a UPC preacher, and she was there, and all of a sudden, she got to shouting all over the church, and she just went to having a good time in the presence of God, and after a while, she gave a message in tongues, and there was interpretation, and when the service was all over, she said, well, I don't know what God's doing with y'all, but whatever he's doing, it's him, because I know him when I feel him. Hallelujah. I got a great aunt in her 70s now. Been in Pentecost since the 1950s. She and her husband come up to the northeast where I was pastoring, came, visited with us, and sang for us. They sung for us here in Dallas as well, but y'all, some of y'all haven't heard them or anything, but they'll be coming back, I hope, soon. And Aunt Dorothy sung for us, and boy, we had good church, and Aunt Dorothy said, I'll tell you what, she said, I've been around the Holy Ghost a long time. I know the Holy Ghost when I feel the Holy Ghost. She said, and honey, that was the Holy Ghost. She said, I don't know why people got to sit around and judge and condemn and criticize and backbite and do all this foolishness. She said, if they would just look, if they would just spend the time to investigate, they would realize that God's on the move. Come on now, in the midst of a people that they don't think God ought to be moving in the midst of. But you know what, brother? They can't take my dance. They can take anything they want to. I'll give them the coat off my back, but they can't take my dance. Because I've reserved it for my father and I. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me today?